Okay, the way I start out all of my tumblers, I use a software called Silhouette Studio Designer. It comes with the Silhouette Cameo, which is what I use to cut my vinyl. You could use any plotter to cut vinyl, whichever one cuts vinyl. This is just the one I have and the easiest I think is to use. Also, the vinyl that I use is Oracle 651 and 631. My preference is 651. Um, because what it's going to happen is the glue from the vinyl is going to heat up on the cup when you put it in the oven. And I find that if you use Cricut vinyl or a cheaper version version of vinyl, it sticks. It leaves the residue behind on the cup. It's fine. Sometimes the Oracle does leave residue behind. It's rare that I have it do it. But if it does, you can get the residue after the cup's completely dried and completely cooled off is what I'm trying to say. Um, just use some Goo Gone and a Magic Eraser. The only time that I've had an issue is if I'm doing like a flat color and I do a lot of flatter black. It's a prismatic powder. Um, when you rub when you rub on that area too much of trying to get the residue off, it takes it gives the flatter black a shine. So I just try to avoid that at all costs and just use Oracle 651. So what we're going to do is we're going to open a file here, and I'm going to do a Mother's Day cup. I have it there, but I'm going to show you how I... And I bought this file from Etsy. So when you open it, you get four files here. You can use the PNG or the SVG. You can also go on Google, and you can download any SVG and do it the exact same way I'm doing here. Save it as a file, and then import it in. So, But I'm going to go with PNG, either or. It's the same thing click it so it's going to bring our image in this image is not going to cut the way it is there's no cut lines on this at all okay so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our tracing tool and we're going to trace this out it's going to turn yellow then we'll just click trace click it move over delete that black and then this is our image and what we want to do here is we want to flip it the next thing I do is take one of these black lines, any of them, it doesn't matter. You could use this one if you want to, or this one. This white line here and this black line, and this are white square, these two white squares and this black line, that's going to be your center vertically. This white square and this white square is going to be your center horizontally. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to line those, these two, you don't have to worry about the horizontal on this one. We're going to line those squares up right with that line right here. See how it's right in the center of those squares? Okay, so go over here. We're going to create two little squares or rectangles, squares, whatever you want to do. And we're going to duplicate it. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to put that right on that center line with them. And we're going to use this. This will get our decal straight on the cup for us. Take this one, we're going to put it right here, just like that. Because when you click this, this box around it is the actual size of your decal. You want these inside of that box. You could have put it, I could put it here, really. And I just want to make sure it stays inside that box. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it all, and I'm going to group it. And we're going to remove those squares before we put the decal on the cup. This is just to line it up, okay? Next, right here, we're going to lock this aspect ratio because we want it to stay this size. And with the cups that I do, I do um, Polar Camel, Yeti, Arctic, Ozark Trail, any tumbler that you have. This one is going to be a 30-ounce cup, so most of the cups, 30-ounce cups, are tapered. So that top part from the lip of the cup down to where it tapers is like three quarters of an inch to four inches different depending on the brand of cup. So I want to keep my decal within that area and I don't want to get it too close. So I always like to go max three inches either way sideways because then it starts wrapping around the cup or up and down or you know in that gap between the lip and the where it starts to um, taper. So what we're going to do is what I always do, since these numbers are so close together, they're an inch off, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go with the higher one and just do 3.0 and it's going to change both of them. So that's going to be our decal. So I'm going to move it to the corner. Then what I'll do is I'll put um, a piece of my vinyl on the sticky mat. I'll put it into the silhouette and then I'll cut this design out. What you could also do is like let's say you want to put a name on the other side of the cup, which I've done before. That there. You could even do um, a longer name. Like that. And then if you select both of these, you can change the font. Let's say you can change the font. And um, also, if you'll notice on these names, see how it has more of a gap up here? So what you're going to want to do, to see if I change this, if I change these sizes, it's not an accurate size because there's gaps here. So what you're going to want to do is click that, release compound. See how it tightened that square up around it? So now it gives us an the true width and size. And see how this is 3.8? I would honestly shrink this down some. That would be perfect right there. You could bring it down some, just like this one. You're going to release compound. This is a longer name, so you're really going to have to shrink it down like that. And you could squish this up. You can bring it down. But then you would still have your center. And you would do these the same way. Put it on a line. Make you two squares, put you two squares on here, and then what we're going to do is on our tumbler, before we powder coat it, we're going to use a dry erase marker, make us some lines, and we're going to use those two squares on there to line that up. And I'll show you that in the rest of later on in the video. So here's our decal. Next step is going to be to cut it out. Okay, so we have the vinyl loaded into the silhouette. Here is the vinyl I use. It's Oracle 651. I usually find a bright color. You can use any color that you want. I just usually do a bright color because once you powder coat it, the powder coating is going to cover the color. And it's easier to see the colors through the paint when they're bright colors. So now I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my design over for it to cut it out. So yeah, make sure you get the Oracle 651. I just like that vinyl better. If you get a cheaper vinyl or like a Cricut vinyl or any kind of vinyl like that, it's either going to melt when you put the cup in the oven or it's going to leave sticky residue once you peel away the parts that you don't want. So I highly recommend the 651. That's just what I use. You might could you get by with the Oracle 631, which is a... Um, it's a lower tack vinyl, but I would recommend the 651. So what that's going to do is that's going to cut our design out. And once that gets through, I'm going to start stop this part of the video and then I'll show you what we do from there. Alright, so I'm going to peel this off here. We got our design here. You won't be able to see it on camera, but you can see the design. So I'm just going to cut this part off. 
we're going to save that for a different decal. So now we'll start, we'll pick up where we're leaving off here. Okay, so I'm trying to film this from above. So we have our decal here. What I did was I peeled away the outside, the part that you're not going to use. You're just going to throw that away. Make sure you leave your two little squares that I showed you to leave on the earlier part of the video. And you're going to want to get a needle and pick out the center of your letters as well. Anything that you, that you need to take out, go ahead and remove it. Which yellow is good for cups, but I probably should have picked a darker color for this video. Because I'm sure that's hard for you to see. But you're going to pick out all the pieces that you don't want. If anything comes up, just kind of press it back down. This is probably the most time consuming part right here. Okay, so there's the decal. We're going to put on the cup. So we have our cup here. This is actually Polar Camel brand. Here's the few things I use. I use these. They're terry cloth towels from Walmart. Goo Gone, if you have anything sticky on here, like um, Arctic and Yeti cups. On a on an Arctic cup, here's an Arctic cup. It's powder coated already, but when you peel this part off, Ozark Trail is the worst because they're adhesive that they use on their labels. Just spray some Goo Gone on your rag or your cloth. See that one didn't really leave. There's just a little bit of a residue. And what you would do, you can get this kind. There's gel. Just spray a little bit on there. And then just rub it right where that circle is. And then if you use Goo Gone, which this is what I use for all my cups. You use Goo Gone, you want to make sure it's an oily. I use this uh, Simple Green. It's a degreasing solution. Spray a little bit on there and make sure you clean all that Goo Gone residue off because your paint's not going to stick to that part. Okay, so that's how that would work if you had to use Goo Gone. On this one, we're just going to use the degreaser. Spray a couple sprays on there. And what I like about these cups too, there's no logo, so you don't have to worry about lining it up. You do want to get it straight, but you don't have to worry about lining everything up with the logo. Whereas if you do the Yeti cup, see they have a logo so you would come up straight from the center and you would want your decal to be right here, which if this was a silver one. Okay, so you make sure you get that cleaned really good. We're going to clean it again in just a second. Okay. And then what I do is I set my cup up like this. I have a yardstick or a ruler and I just put it flat on my surface. Hold it up against the cup. Take a dry erase marker. What you want to do is you want to make a mark at the top just like that and make a mark right here at the bottom. So that'll give us our line. Okay, so I fold this just like that. Lay the cup down. We have our two guides there. Also something you'll need is a transfer tape to transfer the decal. This is a AT6, AT65 tape, clear tape. You can also, another cheap alternative would be um, the, uh, you want to get the releasable, shit, what's it called? Uh, the releasable, not shelf liner, contact paper, releasable contact paper from Walmart. You can get it for a couple bucks. Sorry, I had to think there. 
I, that's what I usually use, honestly, because this 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 uh, transfer tape is pretty expensive. But the thing is, I got it from U.S. Cutter, I believe. The thing is, is, look how much is on that row, and I got two of those. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside, take your transfer tape, and you just want to stick it right over your decal. Okay. Just like that. Take the back of some scissors or whatever you have, credit card or whatever, and you want to just rub it down. You want to get that transfer tape stuck to that decal because you want every little piece to come up. Okay. Just like that. And then this is where your little squares that I had you to do come in handy. So I'm going to take this. You take your two squares at the top and bottom, line your ruler up with them, take a permanent marker, make sure you use a dry erase marker on there. Take a permanent marker and you're just going to draw right down them two lines, just like that. And peel this up and then we're going to trim it off. You don't have to trim it off, I just do, because that's more stuff that doesn't have to stick to the cuff that's kind of not necessary. So what you're going to do now is you're going to peel this up and then you're going to remember to move your two squares. You don't want those on your cup. Okay, just like that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to use that middle line that you uh, those two lines you're going to use those as your guide and you're just going to lay it right on top of there just like that okay now what you want to do that piece of vinyl will not get off there you just rub take your finger rub it down really well You want to make sure you get those little detailed pieces. Rub them down really good. Okay. And then what you'll do is you'll pull your transfer tape. Pull this off slowly. A lot of times it will stick. Okay. Take you a little bit more spray. You want to rub the rest of the cup here. Wipe those lines off. Try not to go over your design because what will happen is fuzz will stick under your design that tape so try not to rub your design just rub go around it clean your tape tape clean your cup really well and then one other thing i like to do is you want to hold it into the light and make sure there's no fuzz or anything on the cup these are pretty good about not leaving fuzz they will leave a little bit in the crease but it's really it's not usually too bad there is some sticky stuff there so I will get my goog on they do have one sticker on them that it's a very small sticker sometimes it leaves residue and sometimes it doesn't but we'll get the goog on and get that sticky stuff off there and then you'll want to go right back over it with your degreaser Yeah, you just want to make sure everything's off there. And then what I'll do is I'll let it set for a second to dry. And then what I'm going to do, it doesn't take long to dry. Make sure your counter's real clean. Set it on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my stand that I put it on. This stand here, I believe it looks really bad. It's got all kinds of paint and stuff all over it. Um, and then when it comes, it's just the stand. It has a rubber piece here. And I always wrap, I just pack it full with tin foil around this part. Actually, I may put another piece on there. <coughs> what you do is just stick the tin foil on top of it. like that okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blow dryer
and then use your same towel that you're using just grab it by the bottom and stick it right on there and then I have a stopper that's going to go into the top of it and you want to make sure you get that bottom real clean okay so now the cups all ready to go out to powder coat so now I'm going to take you out to the garage and that's where we're going to powder coat it so remember the steps in this you'll need your decal transfer tape cup goo gone if there's any sticky residue on the cup I use this all-purpose degreaser cleaner simple green it's like two dollars at Walmart blow dryer dry erase marker to mark on the cup and a permanent marker to mark your decal to get your line straight a ruler and you should and then the terry cloth from Walmart you can get them in a pack of four so now I'm going to take you out to the garage and we're going to powder coat it Okay, so we're out here now. Um, I have the cup here on the stand, and the setup that I have, it's nothing expensive. I do have a ground rod. I drilled a hole in the garage floor. I have a ground rod coming up, and then a wire coming under here, up through the box, because you want that wire to touch the base of that metal plate. If you didn't have that, there is a little clamp that comes on this machine. I got this machine from Eastwood. It's a dual bolt powder coating gun. It's a little clamp. You would just clamp it to that. But since I have the ground rod, I don't need that part. And here's the gun here. I get all my powders from... I get some... No, I don't get all my powders. I get some of them from Columbia Coating. And then I also get the others from Prismatic Powder. That's right. Prismatic Powder is where I get most of my colors. I do get some from Columbia Coating. That's where I got this base plate. The holder from Columbia Coating. I had four of them because I have two base plates in the oven and all that is is it's a charbroil um, smoker. You just want to make sure it gets to 400 degrees. Most people have regular ovens but I just have the smoker. I have a base plate up here to where I'm going to pull the vinyl off once the cup starts to flow which you will see and that's when the point where the paint turns from a powder to a liquid. And then I have a plate there that I do that on. I have two in there and uh, one here, which I can do two cups. I can bake two cups at a time. I also have a, well, that broke, but I also have this mask here. I just use this little mask if I'm doing one cup. If I'm doing more than one cup at a time, I'll make sure that I have a better mask because this powder is super, super fine. So I'm going to hold this. And then also I store all my powders in these little containers from Dollar Tree and I just put the colors on them. I just put them on there with the printer. The box is just a plywood box. I have a filter in the back and then in the back of that is attached to a just a box fan. That way it will pull the it will pull the powder from my project. So I'm going to turn it, I'm going to plug the fan in. I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, it's super quiet. But you want to make sure that you're, when you're oven, you make sure it gets to 400 degrees. Okay? So what we're going to do here, and you may not be able to hear me do all this. Once I get this first coat on and get it in the oven, we'll wait about a minute and a half to two minutes. We may check it to see if it's flowing. And then that's when I'll go over there and I'll explain what I'm doing. Let's see here. Let me get this charged. Because see what this is going to do is you have to hold this little button here. It comes out of the box. You're going to hold it here. See that spark? That's what you want. So we get it started. Get that powder started. There we go. And what that's going to do is that's going to charge that and this. It's putting a charge on it. And then that's what makes it stick together. It's like a negative and a positive charge. You know what, I'm going to do it without this. I wouldn't recommend it, but it broke, so I'm just going to do it without it. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to lightly coat, and you'll see the paint sticking. And you just go down the cup, and you just go right over that decal. You know what, though? Oh. I forgot the most important part.
I knew I was forgetting something. What this is, is this is a stopper. It's going to go right down here. And then it's going to slide up into your cup to keep the power from coming out of it. I used to tape all my cups off, and it just got to be too, uh, it wasn't, for one, it wasn't money practical, and for two, it just, this is so much better this way. So your stopper's going to go in there. Use a binder clip to hold that stopper up. It all comes with it. Okay? There we go. Sorry about that. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to powder coat this cup. Just going all different directions. You want to make sure you get all the whole cup. And you can see the if the light's reflecting off the cup, you know you missed a spot. Because when you get that cup off there, you should not be able to see any shiny part of that cup. I also have a vacuum cleaner out here, so that way if I need to vacuum anything up. And so what I do is I pick this bar up, and I'll tip it in the light, and make sure I got every little thing. If you see like a, because it's going to happen, if you see like a hair or a piece of fuzz in the paint, get some tweezers and kind of very pick it out. You're going to have a little divot or a hole there, and what you'll do is you'll just Put it down after you get the hair out. You're going to have the little divot. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to charge that and back away a little bit. Blow it real lightly until you cover that hole up. Because if you come up right here, it's going to pack onto that hole because that's the part that has the most charge because it's not covered. So there we go. So now what we're going to do is you're going to want to remove your, uh, you make sure you remove your silicone seal here. Take this cup, and we're just going to put it right into the oven. Okay. This part isn't necessarily where you have to get it to 400 degrees. Where you just want to make sure that paint flows. Once you can peel that off, you'll put it back in there. You want to make sure it gets to 400 degrees. Once it hits 400 degrees, you're going to leave it in there for 20 minutes is how I do it. And each powder, there's different powders that are different times and temperatures. You just have to follow the instructions on them. So we'll leave that in there for a couple minutes. And I can go ahead and turn my fan off because I've got that part done. I can unplug the gun because that's done. And if I was going to do a top coat, I would leave that in there, let it cure the full time, take it out, let it cool completely. I would take this part off my gun, you get these with it, vacuum all this out, and I use pipe cleaners to clean in here and and all of those vacuum your you want to dump this back in the container that it came from you don't want to waste any powder and then vacuum off all your parts refill this cup if you have more than one cup that's even better which i do but i tend to just keep the same one vacuum it all out and everything so we're going to let that set and so what i'm going to do after that make sure you get these are great they're the little of gloves for like barbecuing or whatever i can just put this on reach in there and grab that part because these hold up really well as you can tell i've used it so much so what we're going to do is we're going to peek into that oven and make sure that paint's starting to flow not yet it's going to be just a minute i don't think i got my oven hot enough yet but so while that's going i got all my paints over here in the cabinet and i know you can't see it but i have all my paints uh organized in colors, different colors. Um, you can get, you can also, you can get glitter. I have a chameleon color. There's some, there's some really sophisticated, they get really sophisticated with some of the colors. Some colors are two layer, like you put a coat on of it on and it'll be silver, and then you have to put a top coat and that'll change it to like, whatever color it is, like some sapphire colors. Uh, this one's an intense blue. I have a, I also have one that's uh, called crimson. Let's see if I can find it here. The prismatic gold's really nice too. 
my most popular color would be truck blue, a truck blue, and flatter black from Prismatic Colors. That's my most popular that I buy the most. And and Davis Red. I use a lot of Davis Red. I know I'm probably out of camera, but you can see my setup here. I was trying to find that color and I don't seem to know what in the hell I'm talking about here. Maroon Spice. That was it. Maroon Spice. It's got a glitter built. It's like made into it. It's a shimmer. Okay, so our cup's wet now. I'm going to pull it over here. I'm afraid you guys aren't going to be able to see it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it over here. I might could bring it over here. I'm, I'm still afraid you're not going to see it, but I'm going to try this. You know what? I'm going to bring you. It's going to move a little bit. Let's see here. See if I can get you into view. I think that will work. There. Hope. Hope, hope, hope. So I'm going to bring my cup out here. Put my glove on. See the cup looks wet. That's where the powder has went from the powder to the liquid. We're going to let it set for a few seconds. That's why that them, them little parts of the arrow, they're really going to be um, tough to get out. So I may wait for it to cool out here further before I attempt those. Make sure your finger is real clean because I put, my, I put my finger up under here and then just lightly pull. And I messed up a few cups just like that when I first started the vinyl stick. But you know what? After you put that back in that oven, that little spot that you've messed up just blends right in. I've had it. I've thrown so many cups away that I've messed up like that. And then one day I was frustrated, just stuck it back in the oven, and it all worked out. That's what I've learned. Like if I mess up on this part, I go ahead and finish the whole process and continue baking the cup to the fullest because if it's a small mess up, it, the heat from that oven might fix it. I've had some to fix it. What you're going to do is you're just going to pick this vinyl off. And sometimes if it gets to where it's getting too uh, cold, cooled too much, what we'll do is we'll just put it right back in the oven because some some decals you do, you just peel them right off because it's all one piece. Whereas when you're doing something like this, you have to kind of do it piece, piece by piece, letter by letter. So it. I think my video cut off, which I know you can't see much of this because the way I got it angled. And I'm hoping you can see enough of it to get the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue peeling this off. I'm going to show you what I have done so far. I think my camera's about to die. But you'll be able to see, because I'm going to put it back in the oven for a few seconds. But you'll be able to see, see where I peeled that vinyl off and the silver's coming through. So I'm going to put this back in there for a few seconds. Let it get wet again. Pull it out. And then what I'll do is I'll finish peeling that decal, stick it in the oven, make sure it gets to 400 degrees, and I'll bake it for the uh, 20 minutes, full 20 minutes. Okay, this is the last part of the video. The cup is done. Here it is. What I did, the part of the video that cut off where when my battery had died, what I did was I put it back in there for a couple minutes, pulled it out, picked the rest of the pieces off, Put the cup back in there, made sure the oven got to 400 degrees, and I left it in there for 20 minutes. Pulled it out, set it on a stand in here in, in the kitchen, and let it cool. Make sure you don't want to get any hair or anything around it, because when it's hot and that powder is wet, stuff will stick to it. But this is the end right here. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to link down my Facebook page, or I'll do, I'm going to do like a giveaway for this cup. So I'll have, a, when you make a comment, 
it'll go into a drawing for this cup and I'll do it for a week today's the 12th so we'll do it for let's say 13th 14th so the 14th through the let's do the 14th Let's do the 14th through the 20th, 14th through the 20th, 21st, 14th through the 21st. We'll do it for a full week. So here you go. That's the end of it. I hope you guys learned some stuff from this video. I know it's lengthy and I ramble a lot, but I want to make sure I get all the details in there to make sure you guys can actually learn from it. Thank you for watching.